and welcome to Free Cheese, episode 387. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Mark Augustiniak. What's up? Matt Zellner. Hello. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games, brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. We've got a big show this week to talk about the future of Embracer Group, everybody's favorite video game developer. Destruction All-Stars, first impressions and hot takes, and we're going to pick up on some threads we started sewing last week with Samus the Hedgehog. But now, I'm going to ask you guys, you pull up to a Burger King, what are you ordering? Probably a stacker still. Stacker? Did they make the stacker still? They I had a good I don't, I don't know. stacker I'm, sauce. That's how long it's been since I've been. Hmm. The stacker was very good. That stacker sauce was very good. Now, how how high are you going on the stacker there, Matt? You going double, triple, quad? Uh, I I kind of want to love myself afterwards, so double. See, I, I could eat like a triple, triple nowadays. I think I could yeah, eat a triple nowadays, though. It probably lets you win win, right? Mark, what are you what are you throwing down up there at the king? Hmm. My go to used to be that that plain old chicken sandwich. It's like the long boy? Yeah, the long boy. Yeah. Um I kinda like their whatever their name was for the for their was it double bacon cheeseburger? What was that? Well, the Did that have like a here. Did I have like a weird name or am I because I almost called it Baconator, but that's not that's uh checkers. Correct. <laughs> Big Daddy's Bacon or Wait, I thought bacon the bur- Baconator was Wendy's. Is that Wendy's? What's Checkers then? Burger King's Bacon Daddy, I think is what it was. Burger King Bacon. <laughs> it may have just been the Bacon Cheeseburger. It's, that's what I'm getting here. Yeah, maybe. All right, well, yeah, I guess that. Um, way before all that, though, it, it, was, it, it, was, it was just chicken tenders and onion rings and call it a day. Oh, I can't. Breaking cafe, but can't order lunch yet to see the menu because we're still in fucking breakfast. Oh wow, look at that! <laughs> uh, all right, we're g- <laughs> when's the last time y'all had a Burger King breakfast? Ugh, a uh, Burger King breakfast? Probably never. Re- Honestly, re- probably okay. wait never. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, high school, I think. All right, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think it's been around then. Uh, French toast sticks. Oh wait, yep. okay. I've had the French toast sticks, so there I've had go. it. It's there been you go. many years though. Dip it in that years. syrup. Yep. Don't they do the hash browns, little babies inside of the? They do little small ones, like coins. They're like coin size. Uh, yeah, they did that for so a like bit. You just pop them. Yeah. I feel like I would go in college quite a bit. I'd go to a Burger King for breakfast in the morning. Doesn't top a McGriddle oh. though. I know what it was. Oh no, no, the McGriddle's king of breakfast. Yes, uh, the McGriddle. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. But, you're not I remember here. when I used to work at the comic shop and I'd have to go super early and pick up comics uh, from the distributor. Right around the corner from there, there was Burger King. And I'd grab Burger King's breakfast for the drive home. And you could just pop those heckin' little uh, hash browns real good. I don't remember the sandwich being particularly great, but, you know, it was good nonetheless. Mm. The um, bacon air is in D. Wendy's, by the way. I don't know what Checkers has. Oh, Checkers is Baconzilla. <laughs> that's now i don't know if it's still in the burger king menu i think today i'm gonna go and find out but burger king's rodeo burger was always the hit if y'all have never had the rodeo burger I it is not. a regular cheeseburger with your you got your meat cheese then they throw onion Ooh. rings Ooh. and barbecue sauce instead of your ketchup okay. mustard combo because you said rings, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're little baby onion rings. They're, it's super good. And then, what was the king of all kings, which you, this is, I know this is not on the menu and this is, I'm sorry, but a long time ago, what I would get is the rodeo burger with jalapeno popper bites. What they used to have, they would come in the same thing that you get those little, great little nuggety hash browns, but it'd be a small little nugget of a jalapeno Cream or uh, cheddar cheese filling, little. Mm. All that's, right, that's Burger King. Uh, I mean, I, I, I still enjoy their zesty sauce too. Uh, yeah, not 
not to divert anyone from going to Burger King, but Spicy Nugs are back at McDonald's, by the way. I keep seeing ads, and a friend of mine told me they were back, so keep that in mind as you're traveling to your nearest. I had them uh, whenever the heck you told me they came out initially, and they were pretty good. I think I got them the same day I bought my 4K TV, so I might need to buy another 4K TV with my nuggets. Yeah, go pick up one and the other. <laughs> I yeah, I do it. I don't, I haven't. Uh, what the heck did I do? A couple weeks ago, I was craving Taco Bell. I hadn't had fast food in a while, and I was like, I'm gonna have Taco Bell, and I was super disappointed. The lettuce sucked, and it ruined the whole thing, and I shouldn't have done it. But maybe Burger King will swing the tide today, or make me not go to fast food for another month. Lettuce never. However. Once a month, for the rest of the year, we're going to hear all about Tomb Raider. This year, the Tomb Raider 25th anniversary is happening, and developer Crystal Dynamics plans to celebrate uh, by focusing on each game in the series one month at a time. There's a 25th anniversary webpage now live, tombraider.com slash 25. I, so I have a question for you guys, because I thought about this not too long ago. I think around the time the... Uh, Avengers game came out. I was having a conversation with my boss and we were talking about what Crystal Dynamics does next because it sure as heck shouldn't be the Avengers. And uh, talking about returning to Tomb Raider, how would you do that? So I was wondering back then, how do you go? How, where does Tomb Raider go from... Obviously Uncharted borrowed liberally from Tomb Raider's concept and added some you know other elements to it. And then Tomb Raider swung back around and kind of borrowed back from Uncharted. For the 2013 reboot, where do you guys see it going next, or where would where would you want it to go next? I should say. Mm, they'll, they'll probably do first person. Give it, uh, give it some of those tricks from from the Fear games, maybe, where you can like oh. do like a where you can do like a jump kick and all that kind of acrobatic stuff. Yeah, do some Mirror's Edge style stuff. I forgot that aspect of fear. <laughs> are are those fear games readily available now? You can play them on backwards compatibility, right? Uh, console, I' not too sure. So they're uh, on PC, right? They are on PC, but if you want to play the first one, you gotta like download a mod to like fix the frame rate and resolution and all that stuff. It's uh, not up to par for modern PCs. Matt, Tomb though. Raider. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know what you would do with it. I, I think, think the, I solved the, it. The easy oh, top out answer is open world, but I don't think... I think even, like, the last one did that to an extent, right? No, that's... I don't know about the... I didn't play that one. I thought about it, but I never finished that second one. But I, that's exactly where I would go with it. I would... Instead of ripping off Uncharted, I'd rip off Breath of the Wild. Because the big thing that sucks about Uncharted is you're not climbing anywhere you're climbing where they want you to climb and you're not really climbing you're just pushing a button in a direction right make tomb raider so that you can climb anywhere you can just explore a world and then the tombs are the like dungeon right like you're going in whatever because mm. when him and i had that conversation we were talking about like what could they actually pull from avengers that would work well and i think like the fact that in theory, Avengers has, like, that kind of, like, timed content that releases and stuff like that. Like, a Destiny-style open world whatever. You could do something like that to build a story around, like, a, a whatever. And start to thread in things with Tomb Raider. Like, adding artifacts to tombs that you can discover that have, like, a piece of lore attached. Like, you could do some interesting things in that regard and actually make it so that Lara Croft feels like a Tomb Raider of sort. Right? Like, she's uncovering a mystery and you're uncovering it with her. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, make a, make a Breath of the Wild live service game that doesn't different biomes, require me different, to play with other people. Well, Different dungeons. There was that yeah. rumor that they're going to do a game that ties the entire Tomb Raider game saga together. I forgot where I read that. I think it was somewhere on Reset Era. Someone posted that. Interesting. I'd be okay with that. Like... All of like, it? Like, including everything. the reboot? Everything. I don't know about the Angel of Darkness. I would not touch. Everything. <laughs> like I said, the good comes with the bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm intrigued by that. I I don't know. Seeing this story this week, like, Tomb Raider, I don't think it's a lot of fanfare uh, the way it maybe could or should. 
But seeing the story, I was like, I kind of want to go back and play some Tomb Raider. Like, I don't think I ever played much of those first PS1 games outside of the demo I got in a magazine or something, just screwing around with it, locking the butler in the freezer and stuff. But um, I don't know. Maybe I'll go back and finish that, that second one or... Or maybe uh, maybe I misread this. This is me headline reading at my finest, but like maybe it was a, in a collection that included all the games. Although I think you can make a weird story that combines all the storylines. I think you could. Yeah, I think they could do both. Why not? Why not both? Some ancient relic throws you back in time. That's easy. <laughs> Come on. Boom, boom. Done. Yeah, get pulled into the depths of hell. Please Have send me my. Please send twenty thousand dollar bonus check to this address in the comments below. <laughs> Yeah, like and subscribe, please. Ring While the bell. Tomb Raider turns 25, uh, we're not quite there yet, but almost 25 years ago, we were spending time hiding remote mines in air vents. And after Microsoft bought developer Rare, a version of the classic GoldenEye 007 for Nintendo 64 was being produced for Xbox 360. This week, it made its rounds on the internet after not being... Uh, I think we all forgot about this guy. I certainly forgot about it until this week. Uh, but Mark, mm-hmm. you tried it out. How is this uh, this GoldenEye Xbox 360 port that never saw the light of day? Uh, it's actually really fun. Um, I like obviously the original is dated because of the controls and whatever, and we're just not used to that gameplay style anymore. You know, with like, but the way they translated it for to play on Xbox, it just it just it just makes sense. Like you don't have to really think about much. You just go in and do it. I mean, yeah, like the you know the auto aim is still there and all that. So it kind of, I think Perfect Dark had that too for um, Rare Replay and everything. I think the original Perfect Dark had that too, right? Like for sixty four, you, like you kind of just like auto aimed at something if you were close by, but you still had the option to like hit the hit the um, I think the left trigger or the bumper to aim with a crosshair and. You can still hone in if you if you want. They kind of do a um, a Master Chief Collection type of deal where if you hit the right bumper, you switch between graphics of the original and then the, the newer one. And it's like <laughs> the original; they just they made it so blurry <laughs> that it's like it's almost like playing on like a old TV, like old CRT or something. But probably not in the best way. That's probably the one time I'd want it to be a little crisper. Uh, I forgot how far did I get. I got, man, uh, let's see, did the first part, then got to... And this is just the campaign that's part of this, or or do they also have multiplayer stuff? They have multiplayer, but it was local only, so I couldn't really test that, and I, you know, you have to unlock everything as you go on, so I don't have everything from the start. But I think I got a complete build? From as far as I have seen, yes. Yeah. That's wild. That's super crazy. Like, the music was st- still sounded good. Like, everything was still there. The sound effects and everything. Um, there was a funny, weird little uh, intro card before all this, where oh. you usually, you know, you'd see the, the Nintendo 64 logo spinning. And this time, it's just a card with text that says, it's like, what, do you expect me to... To, to get rid of the Nintendo logo, and then it says, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die, or something. Like, it was trying to be cheeky. They're using the quote from, like, a Bond movie. And then it whips up the Rare logo. Um, but, and this was yeah. developed by Rare? or Because this, I, this part I've, I lost myself on. I didn't see any other logos. Like, Rare's logo was there, and it was spinning around. Um, I don't know if that means anything or, or what. Uh, like maybe they just yeah. kept it just for like testing sake or just a placeholder or well, and I think or whatever. This, the big thing because I remember this now. Like I remember the the talks of it happening, but then it all fell through because of licensing deals or whatever. And then we got that um, that Wii game that I think later came to PS3 and 360, but it was like where they put Daniel Craig in instead of Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. And, uh, I and the levels were completely different in that uh, that Activision one. Because I remember playing the one on Wii, and it was just like pretty different experience from the original campaign. I never touched that one. It was uh, <laughs> it was something. 
I like I always made it to the bunker where you like where you have to like break out of the jail cell and you have the girl with you and you find the hacker and everything. Boris, I think his name was. But the game crashed because I fired a grenade launcher too close to me and a little too often. So I think it couldn't handle all the explosions and it just like black screen. Like I could still hear everything, but there was no video anymore. And I was like, okay, well, we're done. <laughs> Um, would you recommend people check it out if they have the means to, or just oh, watch a definitely. video? Definitely, yeah. I mean, like, if somebody was like, "Hey, like," I mean, as, at least for the for the single player, obviously, like, I don't know how you would do multiplayer online, but if you can find a way to do it local, sure, go for it. But um, yeah, if you have the choice between playing the the original or this, I would say this by a long just because of the controller alone. It just it feels so right and so good. Yeah. And it's like well, the all that stress I had. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. Obviously, yes. Yeah. The frame rate is super smooth. Yeah. Yeah. I um, went back to, but I still had a CRT ho- hooked up down here. I went back to GoldenEye on N64, and it. You can't go home, man. You just can't go yeah. home sometimes. Yeah. Uh, this way. This games, way you can. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, I kind of went home though. To the old Game Gear, uh, or maybe not. This is a way you can go home, I guess. Is if a developer uh, acquires all of the developers who used to make Game Gear games and then makes a brand new Game Gear game in 2020. Of course, I'm talking about GGLS Day 3, which, after about a month, I finally made it past the Stage 5 that I was stuck on. I think had I kind of, like, kept with this game, I could have gotten there. But... This became my, like, I'm going to sit down and play something, but before I get in, let me warm up with GG last day three. So I would jump in, and I would do it a couple times until I died, just load my save. So the way I was approaching playing this game is every time I'd clear a level, I would do a sa- a quick save. But I would not do one, like, through, you know, past a, a big intense wave or, like, just before the boss and things like that. I just made it so that... I could like break from the game and walk away from it without coming back to it or without, you know, losing my progress. Uh, in doing so, I learned so the way I'd been playing it is as you fly your way through the Aleste games, all of the games have in some form a little P icon that you collect. And on the left hand side, there's a counter that is uh, counting up to 20. When you hit 20, you get a shield around your ship. So for me, if I didn't have the shield, I was always like, let me get the P's so I can get the, watch the counter go up, get the shield. If I take a hit, let me get the P's again so I can build it back up. So once I had the shield, I really was not chasing after the P because I didn't need it, or so I thought. What I ignored was the top right corner, what is counting up to level up your main weapon. So you have a main, you know, bullet that shoots vertically and then you have your secondary that you collect as a random power up throughout the world just like any other shooter where you're collecting different weapon types but the Mm. main one upgrades by that so it starts where like you get one p and it goes from level one to two then you have to get five p and it goes from two to three and it keeps exponentially you know more and more um so i realized that and then it became a thing like let me do what i can to collect as many of these as i can before i get to the boss of stage five finally did and I was able to I get to him with like a level six or seven gun and take him out. And it just like, like literally the save state from when I first got to stage five was New Year's Eve. And the save state from when I beat him was <laughs> January 31st. It was like exactly a month between the two. Um, so I got through that. And then stage six, I cleared it first run right through stage six. Now I'm on stage seven and I keep running into trouble at this one spot that's uh, just super tough but um it's the thing that's been cool i think about playing this game is it's made me appreciate shooters in a way i don't think i have since parodius like when i really got into parodius a couple years ago i was like seeing these things in a different light and it's this is doing that all over again for me which is i think exactly what m2 set out to do with their whole shot trigger series um so I don't know. I, I'm going to keep going with the Aleste stuff, but I've also been checking out other things here and there. Uh, I bought Cinemora on Xbox. It was on sale for a couple bucks. I had it on Vita a long time ago. 
and it was super hard and tough. Did you ever play Sin and Morrow, Mark? Um, I want to say yes for some reason, but I know it, I, I I know I didn't get far. It's super tough and weird and whatever. But if you, I, I should have just I should have told you about it the other day when it was on sale for like three bucks or something. But it it's a hard you know bullet hell shooter. But mm-hmm. it's also got talking animals, so it's like right there. You know what I mean? Like, um, I see where this is going. Yeah, it's it's really <laughs> cool though. It's it's a fun little thing, and it's from Grasshopper, uh, so it's got that right that, uh, right. that background to it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I that, and then I started going through Xbox and just uh, wish listing every single thing I can find because M2s put out a couple of those shot triggers things on modern consoles. Um, I keep thinking about grabbing, they have another, uh, another one on switch that's Japan exclusive. So I think if I get my fill of G of the Elastic collection, rather, I might grab that other one on switch, um, at some point, but there's still, I still want to go back through Eleste, like the original, like master system versions. And I want to play through GG one and two, um, after I finish three, but three, I, I sunk so much time into because, we were, you know, still playing some 2020 games, trying to get our Game of the Year stuff in line, and I wanted to see if that hung, and of course it did. Uh, how many stages does LSA 3 have? From what I can tell, seven. I think I'm on the final one. Um, there's another mode in... So you can just jump in and play any of the games normally, and then there's a challenge mode that lets you jump in... Uh, to each stage and they have it like broken up on the screen where it's just like stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Um, and then you can jump into like either the beginning, the middle, or just the boss fight. Uh, or I think it's the beginning of the stage, the boss fight, or play through the whole thing, you know, as it is. And it's more like a, a way to like upload your scores to the leaderboard online leaderboard. That's like, Hey, I got through stage one, wave one in this amount of time with this much score. Um, and you can do that where you play through either the whole game or just chunks of the game and see how well you do. The catch with that one, and the reason why I didn't want to play through LSA 3 the first time through that, is they actually have um, a rewind mode. Not that you're mm-hmm. manually controlling, but if you take a hit, instead of losing a life, it rewinds you. So it's actually easier because you have hmm. 40 tries of, of rewinds where... It rewinds you and puts you back in the state. Like, you don't lose your shield. You don't lose your weapon power up. You don't lose a life. So it's a little bit easier to get through um, as long as you're not taking hits, you know, more than 40 times. You can get through it. Um, so the playing it the, the raw way is tougher, but I feel like I'm getting my chops up a little bit more. Uh, learning a bit. It's cool. cool. It's super cool. Speaking of cool, Nintendo multiplayer may be getting an overhaul. According to Twitter users at ThomasNet underscore MC and at Oatmeal Dome, Nintendo is preparing a multiplayer overhaul. Currently, the company uses a technology called Nex, something it's been licensing for use since the 3DS. Uh, this is, uh, it used to be called something else um, and was bought by Ubisoft, or it is called something else and was purchased by Ubisoft in 2010, and Mike, or, uh, Nintendo started licensing it from them at that point for 3DS, Wii U, and of course Switch. Uh, reports are that the new system is called NPLN, and it's currently working in a preview phase with the Monster Hunter Rise demo acting as a way to test it under stress. Uh, reports from some users claim that online play has been notably better and is working on mobile data and NAT environments that were previously incompatible with the next format. So that's potentially exciting. I don't know what uh, that means long-term or anything else. I dug into... I was wondering why this was coming up this week, and I read through the Nintendo financial briefing, and there was nothing like, you know, Q&A about, about this in there at all. Um... This just looks like some folks who do some switch hacking, digging into stuff. But the financial briefing, we got another non-committal new switch hardware update answer, which was just like reiterating that the switch is halfway through its life cycle, still selling well. I, st- I I'm like, I'm still putting money away for a new switch this year, but I'm also like not entirely convinced that it's going to happen. I feel like they could keep riding the momentum of what they have from last year 
with Animal Crossing and everything. But I don't know. Did you, uh, did, did, I don't know how true this is, or somebody was just making a joke, but when they were talking about that old multiplayer infrastructure, uh, somebody mentioned Splatoon 2. Did you see that? Yeah, the, the that Splatoon 2 has, like, Windows 98 code embedded in the online multiplayer, which it's commented <laughs> out. It's not actively in yeah. use. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the, but like it, the it checks for system, it. Yeah, the next system is based on, uh, I think it's Qual something. I, I should have wrote the name down. Um, but that has been around in ways since the 90s. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just is, thought that was funny. Yeah, I mean, that stuff, like, there's a lot. Like, you, you think about how advanced we've come with computing and things like that. But when you kind of get down to the nitty-gritty, like, it's it's all still the same crap we've been doing forever. You know what I mean? And, like, so much of, like, how computers work or whatever or, or the logic behind how people program them is based in telephone technology. You know what I mean? Like, there's all that stuff that's just, like, so archaic, but it somehow strung together all works. Yeah, like in some places, once they get something working, they don't want to take the time to change it or, you know, update it or something because it's just too many moving hands at once probably or just a – it, it could become yeah, such a, a big, mess if not yeah, done right. Yeah, big lift to like get everything to work uh, to change over. So we'll see how this goes. It sounds like the Monster Hunter stuff worked well. Um, I'm curious to see, you know, if there is a Splatoon 3 this year, does this adopt a new online mode or, or, or online backend? It's online back end. It's not its problem. <laughs> there's yeah. There's there's a lot of a lot of <laughs> issues there. Embracer Group, or should I say THQ, or should it's I Embracer say Embracer Group? Be be right. be correct. All right. Embracer be Group is now everyone. acquired. Its seventh and eighth operating groups. Uh, on Wednesday, Embracer Group announced a merger with Gearbox Entertainment, followed by a merger with. Easy Brain, a mobile developer, and along with both merger announcements, Embracer Group announced its acquisition of Asper Media through its subsidiary Saber Interactive, who it had previously purchased last year. So the the group keeps getting bigger and bigger. I mean, seventh and eighth operating groups, like they're just kind of pulling it, they're merging and, and pulling in all these different arms uh, within. Am I the only one who's worried a little bit about all these acquisitions? Not just with Embracer Group, but industry-wide, the way that these things go. I think, I mean, let's just jump into this, too. Stadia Games announced that its internal studio is going to shut down, or is shutting down. Uh, the company is no longer investing in internal exclusive content outside any near-term planned titles. Stuff like this, I mean, we see a company like Google get into this space, and we all were very hesitant and reluctant initially uh with what it was because of google's track record and i think as more companies start doing stuff like what embracer group is doing granted from my memory embracer group largely has its ties rooted in video games where google is more of a tech-based company but as these companies continue to do this stuff like are we worried about I don't know. I mean, I guess the thing is, like, studios, companies don't make games. People make games. So, at the end of the day, those people will end up somewhere. But also... I, don't, I think you're... You might be seeing... Maybe we're maybe farther past the beginning of it. But, like, like tech startups. A lot of them start up, make an idea, and then sell it. And then they kind of just, like, move on to the next idea that they have. Maybe, maybe we're seeing something like that in the industry where... You know, these names go independent, they get it to a point where they sell the company, and then, but you see how the big names don't usually stick around with the big publishers anymore. They usually go out and do their own thing, whether it's another studio inside the publisher that's small, or they go full indie. Uh, I just think maybe you're starting to see a wave of that here, and I think that means the death of, set, what, Double uh, A game, like the old TH middleware stuff, like... That, that, that's that been not a thing for a while, but I think if it goes into this new wave, I definitely don't think you're going to see middleware games anymore. Uh, we were starting, I think, like, as some of these indie game devs became bigger publishers of things, I think we started to see, like, another uprise in that stuff. 
my worry for stuff like this is like there was an app I used to use called Sunrise. It was a calendar app that was gorgeous. It was like it looked better than native Apple apps at their best. Right? It was just super – it functioned well. It looked beautiful, yada, yada, yada. And then Microsoft bought Sunrise. And little by little, that team got swallowed into the Outlook team. And the idea was that they're going to make Outlook look better like Sunrise. And, like, Outlook's better than it was, but it's still Outlook. And it's not Sunrise. You know what I mean? Like, that's the yeah. stuff that, you know. Or, or same thing. Like, we saw uh, – who knows what's to come of it, but – uh, I think video game speaking, we saw that with Valve and uh, help me out. Who was that uh, Firewatch dev? Oh, you know the one. I know that game. Mm. Oh, Campo about. Santo. It's like, I'm kidding, by the way. I knew. I almost said Coffee Stain. That's completely different. No, Campo Santo. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. But that, like, I don't know what the heck they're up to. I think. Somebody there was working on Half Life Alex, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, but you know, I, I don't know. They I, designed one haptic trigger on the index. That's one person did that. <laughs> this one, just one though. So I, I don't know. Uh, along with the, the Stadia Game Studio shutdown, uh, Jade Raymond has left Google to pursue other opportunities. Uh, Google intends to help the studio's staff find new roles and support them within the company. Um, they Google's are going to be on the rooftop of the uh, corporate building and <laughs> doing absolutely nothing. That's where their new role will be. Raking in somewhere between eighty dollars to $120,000. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Google is intending to shift its focus with Stadia uh, on the technology so that industry partners uh, can leverage the technology and deepen its business partnerships. Which I guess long term is kind of like how, you know, if they want to use Stadia the way that Microsoft uses Azure servers or something like that, you know, like we know that Microsoft was what working with, I believe PlayStation started, opened a contract with Microsoft to use Azure servers for PlayStation Now not too long ago to try and beef that up. Obviously, Microsoft is leveraging Azure for xCloud. So I could see Google already being a uh, a server company in a way leveraging tech stadia server technology for other things yeah the problem was never the tech i mean well some yeah. of the hardware parts of it weren't the greatest either from what i heard but like the tech worked that that was not the problem it was the subscription model and the buying on top of that and just the lack of third party support and then just because it launched and had no traction that's kind of where we're at now yeah not the tech no, it, the tech seemed cool, and I, you know, the the promise of it. I remember watching that live stream, man, and like the promise of being able to watch someone on YouTube streaming something and then just jump in for yourself is so rad. And I don't think any of that stuff ever got realized, or if it did, it was not talked about in a significant or meaningful way. Um, I don't. Know, it's a shame. But I just, I mean, I, I, I truly like the idea of like infinite resources when you're developing a game, like when you build on a server rack like that like you don't have to worry about someone's limitation of having just you know a five-year-old processor and a graphics card is three years old and all this other stuff yeah did we ever see the thousand man battle royale Uh, no i don't think so Hmm. it's a shame (laughs) well we will see we'll see what what comes of stadia uh, we just heard uh, last, well, Friday night. Sorry, some hot kayfabe. Kayfabe, for you. Yeah, there you go. Um, speaking of which, how was that? Uh, your what was it? Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble. Remember the name go? Edge? Huh? Edge. Remember Edge? Yeah. He's your winner in the 2021 Royal Rumble. Sure. Why not? <laughs> why he saw the goblet. No, we're we're Vampire Edge is no longer a thing. The uh, no. what was oh right, something of darkness, by <sighs> Brotherhood or something. No, it was like Ministry of Darkness. Yeah. Now I got the music in my head mm-hmm. and the red lights. Edge Christian, um, Gang, not Gangar, Gangriel. I think Ga- his name was. Yeah, yeah, Gangriel. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Oh man. 
The deeper you go with those names, the more it does sound like Final Fantasy fourteen characters. <laughs> no, well, 14. 16. Just... Yeah, 16 is just <laughs> John Smith. Uh, but 14, we just Cleon learned on last... Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> we learned on Friday that uh, new expansion, Final Fantasy fourteen Online and Walker, uh, is due out this year, sometime in the fall. Uh... Endwalker will bring kind of a conclusion to the story that started with A Realm Reborn and mark a new beginning for the beloved MMO. Um, this seems like a one of those things where I think kind of like how Destiny just tried to flatten everything a little bit uh, to make it a little bit more approachable for newcomers. Because before we started recording, dear listener, we were talking like, do we, do we talk about this? Like, none of us are actively playing it, but I am always wildly fascinated with Final Fantasy XIV. I just don't know where to jump in. Like, you know, there's so much content. Like, I'd I'd love to play it, but signing up to play it, to me, sounds like I'd be signing up for... Like, the people on my PSN friends list who play this game, it is the only thing they play. You know what I mean? Like, and I just, I don't have that kind of time in my life for this. But boy, do I want it. Um, Also announced was a PlayStation 5 version of... 14 scheduled to launch an open beta on april 13th of course we're going to see significantly improved frame rates faster load times 4k resolution support and more if you have the ps4 version then you can download for free uh free upgrade and then if you don't have it you'll be able to just jump into five through a free trial like you would with any other version of the game uh, the new expansion is going to add a whole bunch more new jobs, level cap increase, new areas, high difficulty raid, dungeons, yada, yada, yada. All of that and more. I'm surprised. I was really expecting this announcement to announce that 14 was also coming to Xbox. Surprised that it didn't. I just feel like Square's had a really good relationship with Xbox this time around, and stuff like all, like all those Final Fantasy games coming to Game Pass is a, a big get. The Kingdom Hearts games have been on there. There's just been a good kind of wave of support uh, and partnership between the two and i kind of expected this to happen but then i'm like maybe it's because it's the end of the line for 14 or maybe i don't know at the same time 11 still running so this is not the end of the line <laughs> like 11 has been running for 20 years now i mean yeah I, I think the difference here is like those games were like kind of they're they're done like that's not a yeah. live game this is and who knows what that contract looked like back when this game first came out or hell back even when a wrong reborn was done like you don't know who gave them money to make sure that this thing stayed alive or whatever and that could have been where playstation stepped in and made it exclusive at least on console um yeah but i don't I, you know that's that's an investigation there that would need to happen but uh the same yeah. thing happened with dc but although dc universe was developed at the time by a Sony owned studio, but then that did later come to Xbox and switch and everything else. I don't know. I feel like, I don't know why, but I felt like I would jump into it on Xbox just cause it would feel like super fresh. Cause I've already played it on. PS4. Is it cross? It is on PC, right? I'm not going crazy. Yeah. Is it cross yeah. progression? Yeah. All right. I was making, I, remember, I was thinking maybe uh, the tech to move it to Xbox isn't there yet, but you know, if, if it is yeah no it's on pc it's on mac native mac like you can just buy a mac version and play it there because i've thought about that too where i'm like well i wouldn't have to go through the pc loop you know that all those hoops i don't know yeah i don't know that one i was because i thought for sure maybe cross progression wasn't a thing and then because all right well that would be a reason because no new player is going to start on xbox like at this point no because they force you to sign into a square enix account Hmm. When you set up the thing, and then that that is what I believe sinks your player progress. Makes sense. Mark, you want to jump back into it with me? Hmm. I have to check on Fancy Star New Genesis first. And oh shoot, you're right. See, let's play the real MMO. Get back to you. <laughs> uh, Matt, when Final Fantasy 14 comes to the PlayStation Five, you gonna give it a try? No. How about when Destruction All Stars comes to the PlayStation Five? Are you going to give that a try? I tried. I tried. You tried already. Came, and how this... is PlayStation Plus's Destruction All Stars for the PlayStation Five? Potential is 
the word there. There yeah. is a lot of potential in this game. If it was called Twisted Metal and it was in that attitude and all that other stuff. Um, this, okay. So, Destruction All-Stars, it is a vehicle and character um, co- car combat game. Uh, 16 player lobbies, two modes that are uh, solos, two modes that are AV8. Um, each character uh, does bring like a unique ability, so it kind of has that hero Overwatch kind of feel to it a little bit. I don't think anything is the few characters I've tried. I don't think I've had anything like OP or, or whatever. A couple unique abilities that that helped as I was like trying to wrap my head around the game and the hour and a half I spent with it, but like nothing that I found early on at least. Um, but uh, yeah, like. Uh, let's go over to the modes there's there's four of them like i said two of them um what are they called oh i had i thought i had it up i don't have it up anymore but there's two the two solo ones one is like who has the most points at the end you get points by crashing the impact of the crash if you get a ko on a car or a character um i think avoiding some hits also gets you some points uh there's a couple of things around the arena uh that you can collect as well that will give you some points but whoever is causing the most mayhem is your winner there is another one where uh very seems like fall guys inspired the last level where it's the hexagons that kind of fall away uh, it is one of those with uh, no borders, so you can fall off the edge. But that is like a last man standing kind of thing. Uh, if you get, you can get lives by KOing other players. Uh, but that, that, you know, that is like last man standing. Uh, there are two AV8 games. Both are the same kind of idea. You want to take scrap pieces and bank them somewhere. Um, the one called, I think, it's called Carnado. It's actually pretty cool. It's um, As you crash, you collect gears, but much like that Destiny mode, the more, like, you you can only bank so many. Like, you can start with one, but, like, you can't bank until you get five points, or you can't bank until you get ten, well, it's called gears in this game, but, like, if you you can't bank until you get ten gears. You can bank at eight gears, but you only get credit for five of them. So, it's, like, kind of a risk-reward thing. Um... And then you actually throw your, you send your, or drive your car into the tornado, and then that's how you cash in, and you destroy the car and all that stuff. And then you just start again, you look for another car or whatever. Uh, the other one is very, like, uh, bases. So, if, uh, I don't know if the maps change or whatever, but, like, the one game I played, it was, like, A, B, and C. Uh, as you KO cars, pieces of scrap come out. But unlike the other mode, you actually have to get out of the car to collect them. I think you can carry up to four or five. And then you have to go, as a character, jump like on top of the bank area. Um, and then it's a matter of like who controls the most points at the end. Or you know, Do you have two or, or three of the, of the points? If so, you win. Or if you max out the amount of scrap you can put into them to kind of give yourself a lead over the opponent putting scrap into the... Um, into the bank if you max out all three at the same time as an automatic win um so yeah one of the downfalls though is i actually had to go out to read some of that i'm sure like i could go into practice modes or single players and get the gist of of it but like nothing told me what these game modes were i had to go out to a website to figure that out like i even today like reading up on like one of the modes the um the the bank one like I, I only play one game of that and I kind of thought I had the gist of it but then like today I didn't realize that I was wondering why I couldn't bank <laughs> I didn't know how to get out of the car I thought I could just ram my car into the bank thing and cash that way evidently that wasn't working so it wasn't helping my team that much in that game um so that, that's one of the problems I feel like there's not good easy descriptions like like e- there's not even like a one sentence thing when you go to the mode online to be like hey this is like what you're doing like I just needed that. That's not even there. So I'm just kind of r- jumping into these games blind. I'm just kind of hoping that like I kind of figure it out along the way, or with the little descriptor that comes up the bo- at the bottom. But like all it says is like KO to survive or whatever to survive, or like KO to get scrap. Or like it doesn't s- specifically say what the game mode is. Uh, you're just kind of more or less guessing. Um, 
like I think that first game though, that solo one is probably the the star of it all. That's just the one that's causing the most mayhem. That second one is a lot of fun, but by the time you get into a game, by the time you go through the character select screen, by the time you like low times aren't the issue, but like you do you watch a little open and cinematic. You can get in and literally die in the first five seconds, and like you getting into the match takes longer than what the ash- match actually could take, and that's kind of frustrating, especially for a new player, because uh, you're not learning that that much. So I don't know. Um, what I really like, what I really like about it, is the actual gameplay. I think there is a lot of potential here. I, I like the idea of. You running around, you going into various different cars. Uh, there's some cars that are lighter, some cars that are heavier. You can kind of do the math. You can kind of figure out how the, how the game works from there. Like the heavier ones hit harder. Uh, they have more health, but their turn radiuses are slower. You're not as fast. You can get to a smaller car, uh, a little more lightweight, turns a little bit quicker, but doesn't have as much health and doesn't hit as hard. Like either they're all on these platforms you kind of jump up and climb in and you just start going uh i i like the idea of being in and out of cars like i got at first i thought you wanted to just stay in a car for forever but no like this game encourages you to jump in and out um your character does have a regular kind of a like uh like a hero ability after you charge it up after some time i think you charge it up by getting points there's also these like pink shards along the um in some like the more platformy areas of the arena you can grab them and i think that powers up your stuff uh faster uh but you can only get that on foot uh and then every character has a special unique car with a special ability or, or something like that um so there's a lot of potential there i can easily like this could have been a twisted metal game i can easily see like a twisted metal character running through and then using like their unique car as the special car and like, I don't know, like, you can tie in some kind of story content to for their unique ability uh, as, a, as a hero. Um, that was always then, the thing I thought Twisted Metal was missing. Or not missing, but, like, something that I wanted out of it was those characters had such personality. And the personality was realized, I think, in the vehicles. But I also loved the potential and the idea of, like, being able to get out of the car with one of them and, like, move around as... You know what I mean? Because the characters were so cool and weird and whatever. Uh, well, Hammerhead can stay in the truck. Well, yeah, yeah, we want to. Yeah, but you could physically there. run over a hammerhead if you wanted to. Like that's one of the things. Like you are running around on this arena, you are exposed. You are dodging mechanics, but like yeah. you, you just can hit him while he's yeah. walking with his barbed wire tattoo and his, uh, <laughs> you know, slim jim. Yeah, and, and I think that I mean I never really played because he's a dirtbag, huh? <laughs> I said I never really played that PS3 version, but like I remember the coverage of that, and it seemed like that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to get like maybe you out of the car, not on foot, but like in helicopters and trying to do some other stuff. I feel like this is the better way to go. I like the idea yeah. of the hero ability. It's it's you know I don't know if it's broken. Yet. I haven't I really haven't played that much. But like here's the thing, I kind of want to come back to this game and play a little bit more. One, to learn uh, more of the mechanics, but because I think the gameplay is solid once you kind of get your, wrap your head around these modes. Um, sadly, 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 I think we are going to get the end of the hot mic in PlayStation 5 games because they set up 16-player lobbies all with hot mics on before people that have not played a Madden game or are aware of microphones being on, so... That was a lot of fun that I'm going to miss because they just hot patched that uh, that being off by default now. So um, rest in peace, the hot mics in PlayStation 5 games, uh, sadly. Why do you think they did that? I don't know, but man, you, you heard some great stuff. But I mean, like, is that a thing where like Sony was like, hey, this is a feature of the PlayStation. We need this to be shown off that you can use your controllers and microphones, so please keep it in. You think it was an oversight? Like, I don't know. It just seems like a weird... I don't know. So here's the thing. I actually used it once to chat with a friend, and it worked just fine. It's actually more convenient than, like, getting my headphones or, or, or yeah. you know, whatever. Like, it, it worked for that. We played, like, three games of Madden together, and, like, it, it was just fine. It worked. It was good. And you did this, like, just his voice coming out of the, yeah. the TV, and, and you just... Or out of the uh, controller, because it would be him out of the controller, and then me just you know talk not like talking into it, but like just talking normally, yeah. and, it, and it worked. It was, you know, it's not bad. Uh, I like the idea of that social aspect being easier without having the headphones and all this other stuff. But yeah. in this, this is bad. <laughs> yeah, sixteen people at once, all 
screaming whatever they're screaming. Probably not great. Mark, you were about to say something? Oh, uh, no, I was just going to ask about the controller. Like, could you hear the other person's TV through the controller and then have, like, an echo, like, thing go on and... Um, yeah, if your TV's loud enough and you're or you're right up on it. Um, I mean, when I was playing with my, on the like the actual like PS5 level of this, when I was playing with my buddy, it wasn't that bad. The only thing that was weird, like some of the sounds still come through the controller, and that kind of like gets a little weird. They separate the channels, so I think there's some the challenges there to it, but like sometimes it was kind of hard to hear that person over top the other channel playing the actual audio from the controller. But like in this. Yes, there was probably always like four people that you could hear the echo from their TV. It do- that does happen a lot in Madden. I always mm-hmm. hear like my announcer say something, and I just hear it right back through my controller. Uh, so, um, <laughs> yes, that, yeah. So, no. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I I like the easy social feature of it. Games need yeah, it's to not turn ideal. that it's, yeah. off by default. <laughs> Um, no, it, do but you think that to... Destruction All Stars is the first step toward Twisted Metal coming back, or do you think that this replaces that for Sony? I'm going to go back to a cut prediction that I had that I would have been wrong because I said I was going to. I did say day and date with the game release, but I truly think you will see a couple iconic Twisted Metal characters pop up as viable characters in this. Um, mm-hmm. There are different currencies in this game. I think there's two different currencies. I don't know if you can buy more or not. I really just jumped in to play some games. I did not go through the menus. And I, I know you can, I think, customize your character to an extent. I don't know what parts are free, what parts aren't. Uh, there is a leveling system to your profile. So as you play games, you go up. I think I'm level three in the hour and a half I played. Um and I'm pretty sure that was unlocking stuff for me or some kind of currency. I don't know, like I said, I don't know all the fine details of that part, but I can easily see this game having a store if it doesn't already have one. And um, what what's his face? Um, who's the fucking face? Why do I blank on names? Yeah, I can easily see Sweet Tooth being a character running around, and then his clown, the uh, ice cream truck, is the. You know, it's this special ability, and it has, you know, it does something like a twisted metal car would do, some kind of like homing missile or whatever, and, you know. Yeah. But, like, this game, I think the, you know, the characters are very overwatchy, and, like, there's just, like, these just randomly thrown together. I I, I, I don't know why, like... This, so they're they, lame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the default Yeah, I want, like, cool goth... I just want cool. I want to. I want <laughs> cool. You want goth barefoot goth racer. girl. But like that's. I think that's <laughs> the thing though. Like there might be. I can't remember, but there might be a cool goth girl in it. But it's just one. But it's also mixed with like the um, like the like the Lucio fucking um yeah. <laughs> version. You know, there's like there's also like this game's version of a Lucio in here that looks just like him. Or you I know, guess the that this version. is more approachable than I guess a twisted metal would be for a wide audience or whatever. But like probably I, yes. I don't know, man. There was something cool about that. Like, say what you will about David Jaffe, and, and like, I think that last that last piece that drawn to death was not super great. Uh, and maybe a, a modern twisted metal would suck. I don't know. Like, maybe I'm holding on to me being seven and, and thinking that stuff was cool. But I don't know, man. I just feel like that story of like all of these people enter this tournament because some you know, shadowy, spooky guy is going to give him whatever one wish. They- That's a cool concept. Like it just, you know what I mean? Like it's a nice, weird little like monkey's paw, sci-fi, twilight zone, whatever the heck you want to call it kind of concept. Uh, sorry, I keep uh, hijacking your destruction all-stars conversation to talk about how cool twisted that is. <laughs> But I think that's one of the other things, right? Like, you can kind of remember some of the levels from Twisted Metal, like, kind of like when that, like, this, I don't even think, I don't know the arenas are changing. The arenas change per game because they have to fit the game style, but, like, the outside of it isn't changing. Like, Roller Champions, uh, just to throw out another game, I'm kind of, like, waiting for to see how that ends up. Like, the arena is the same, but at least the outside of it, like, I, you know, from what you can see sometimes, yeah. like, is different. There's a different kind of, like, theme to it in some of the colors and stuff like that, like, I don't feel like this even has changed because I tried playing that um, that hexagon mode quite a few times, and that arena did not appear to change at all. Like I don't know, I feel like if you 
gave some of that twisted metal, like, just fucking tear, torn down city background. Like, have it in the arena. I think that would be cool, but just, be like, this arena and this, like, torn, worn down city. Um, you know, some of the production stuff, uh, you know, like, the fake production, because it is an arena, is really cool. I, I'm pretty sure if they did not get the guy... Dude sounds just like him. The guy who's now um, doing like the no, main event him. UFC stuff. Yeah, I thought that was like a cool little touch that like at the beginning of every thing, as you're kind of like loading in, getting ready to go, it's just him yelling like main event, like here we go, and then the three counts down three, two, one, and then you're you're running towards a car. He said, "I like potential. This game has a lot of potential. It just sucks that it's like the 80th like." game to use like gen- not generic but like overwatch heroes that are just like all over the place in terms of like <laughs> one looks like this and then the other one looks like that and they're in the same world together i don't know sure yeah but uh yeah i this is know. uh developed by lucid games who so lucid was previously uh the folks from bizarre creations uh which was a British video game development studio in Liverpool. Uh, they did Project Gotham Racing. They did Geometry Wars. Uh, they were bought okay. by Activision in 2007. And oh. then Activision closed them in 2011. And they opened Lucid Games. Uh, as Lucid, I remember them from Jacob Jones and the Bigfoot Mystery, which was meant to be an episodic, cool adventure game, and I loved it. I thought it was super cool on Vita, and never got. Uh, they, I don't think it ever finished. They did like a second episode, but only on iOS, not on Vita. Um, but they ended up doing Dr- Geometry Wars Three. Um, they've done some like other those. stuff, but yeah, Destruction All Stars is the next big one. Just a couple more things to add. I found the game modes. Uh, it's real quick. Mayhem was the first one I talked about, where it's just who can cause the most mayhem. So I named uh, appropriately. The survival one is called Gridfall. Carn- I was right about Carnado. And then the last one is called Stockpile, the banking one. Um, and then just because it is a PS5 game, and I do really like the haptics, the, the few games I've played on the PS5, I d- have liked all the haptics. I think what they did in this one's really cool. If you are going forward and like you go to stop, like there's a stop trigger on L2, and then it like as soon as you come to a complete stop, the stop trigger releases as you start your momentum backwards. And That's it's cool. the same thing as you're going backwards. You get the stop trigger on R2 until you stop your momentum and start going forward, and then it releases and you're like hitting the gas pedal. I think that's a really cool uh, little thing for a car game. Yeah, I, that's the stuff about the dual sense that I think is long term going to be cool if people keep up with it. I hope. Do you think that Destruction All Stars has the Rocket League potential? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Rocket League, the... if you remember, started pretty uh, bare bones. Correct. Like, um, there was just something about Rocket League that I remember the first time. I just in a practice. I wasn't even playing the game. I just like b- booted it. I was like, "What is this? I don't understand." Did a practice and just started driving around and like the concept. I, magic happened for me there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think that same magic. I think there's some cool things here. I think it has lasting power, uh, and they said they're going to keep adding stuff to it. So, um, yeah, they did. Sweet tooth. Yeah. Um, and then with this game kind of being like that first like mega kind of free multiplayer thing, I, I think there is there's some lasting power here for early adopters. Of the PlayStation 5. Um, I just don't know. Like After the month of February. As people start to get new PlayStations. If it's people are going to go out to buy it. Yeah. that's uh, Well. I mean I think. Again. like Rocket League did pretty well. After it. It had a big spike with Plus. And then after that. like It never had a problem. But the audience sales. was already there. Right? Like There were so many PS4s out yeah. in the wild at that point. Yeah, um, that was like almost two years into PS4's life cycle. It's a different, a different beast. But yeah, I'm curious, man. And I also now you've got me. I'm all over the place. Like I already bookmarked a whole bunch of Tomb Raider stuff I want to go look at. But now I'm like, maybe I should just play some Twisted Metal. Like maybe I go back to that that PS3 game that I never 
liked, but I'll try it again and see if it. I like it. You know, it's funny you said about going back to Twisted Metal. I was thinking, oh, just go play Black. But yeah, that's right. There was that one on PS3 that I literally just talked about five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, they've got that one. Black they put out on PS4 finally. Um, which I... Huh. You'll have to check if you can buy PS2 games for PS4 on PS5. <laughs> My guess is that Jim Ryan shut that down. Because why would anybody want to play that? But this... I wonder... I just I don't know if there's a lack of like titles on it right now, but it seems like that store is going to be a bit of a mess. So like the answer might be yes. I just won't be able to find it. You can't just search Twisted Metal. I'm sure. Yeah, you can just search. You could just do okay. That. I was I'm say, saying like just search. Yeah, I'm saying like browsing doesn't look. Oh no, yeah. Great oh, right dude, now. trying to find the PS2 games on PS4. <laughs> I tried to do it without searching. I just wanted to look at a list of every PS2 game. I I don't remember how I got there, but I did, but it, it was a mess. I had to go through like some weird menu and find something and then click on something else and then I got there, but a mess. We're going to go make a mess for a couple of minutes. When we come back, we'll have more to talk about after this short break, uh, including uh, updates to session, asking you shall receive, a little peek at, the, at a, a hot new demo on Steam, several of them. Uh, and the future of college football, Matt. Stay tuned. Great news, football fans. NC, I mean, college football is coming back. That's right. For everybody who's been long awaiting the return of NC college football by EA Sports, wait not too much longer for NC college football. Why do they call it college football and not NCAA, Matt? Uh, that is probably because of the NCAA being a bunch of crooks. So <laughs> did you ever stop believing? That's, that's my question. The tweet, uh, what? put out there by EA sports at EA sports college on February 2nd. For those who never stop believing hashtag EA sports college mm-hmm. football. And uh, we're blown away by your passion for hashtag EA Sports College Football. We look forward to sharing more information as development progresses in the next couple of years. Is this is is EA Sports College Football the new NBA live for them? Like, is this the thing where they're going to keep saying they're making it, but never actually put a product out? No, they'll make it because there's no competition. No one. It's easy money. So from what I understand from this, this is a obviously a return to college football, but they're going to work with more uh, teams individually rather than go through NCAA. Is that the idea? Potentially. I, I, I have not read all the legalities about this, but I know one of the re- main reasons why it stopped was because of the um, – like commissions, because college athletes couldn't get receive a paycheck, uh, you know, for being a collegiate athlete. It goes against right. NCAA standards and uh, and all this other stuff. So, uh, but then of course the games took liberties with player likeness. They essentially made the players, but just called them quarterback number seven or wide receiver number thirteen. They just threw numbers on them, but uh, yeah, but it was pretty much that player. Um, and then later on, like, people would make the actual rosters, like, the names and stuff, and import them in. So it got, it got, it got weird. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know how this is all going to work. If they work with the schools directly. I know they approved, I don't know if it was the NCAA or just college football standards, approved starting to maybe potentially play, pay some players uh, because the college football makes so much money. Uh, it's a revenue beast. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, maybe that's a loophole to get around the NCAA. Not sure. 
The NCAA is just a bunch of crooks, honestly. Yeah, well, this, from what I remember, like, the, the series going away was, people were upset about the series going away. Obviously, for the right reasons, it went away, but um, what made those games better than the Madden games? I mean, they played similar in, in terms of that. I like the the franchise modes in both were different because of the way just they're set up. Like, Madden is you managing a team, um, and, you know, over, like, you would sign contracts for, like, eight years or, or whatever. But like, in this, you had to constantly keep rolling with it. Um, so, like, I like the I, I like the recruitment stuff they always did. I thought it was really cool. Um, the, you know, the upkeep with that. And then I think the Superstar mode was always cool because there was always, like, an end in sight, like, a, a reasonable ending in sight uh, four years uh in those modes and then and, and, you know when you did them in tandem with the two games together you could import your draft class or your character into madden's superstar mode or madden's franchise mode depending on you know what mode you're coming out of so i don't know i think i think people might be more excited for the the tandem of the two again or for the dynasty mode to come back but like as far as how they played i don't think they played any different Especially now, the Madden playbooks have a lot of the um, like the college football esque plays in them already. Like their the college off- offenses run a little bit different than NFL offenses, but like that evolution since the last college football game has kind of taken over the NFL now. So a lot of those play types and the way you can play in a college football game, you kind of already see in Madden now. So uh, I, I I don't know what the what the real excitement is here for. Is, is it for the tandem of the two? Is it for the return of possibly of a dynasty mode, or is it just because people want a college football game? I, I'm not quite sure. I, I, I'm, I'm excited for a dynasty mode again like that, um, but also like I have no faith in this because the stuff around Madden is bad. <laughs> the actual gameplay is not bad. I, I, I mean, I like the gameplay of Madden, but the stuff around it is not good, and I don't have any faith that EA Sports is going to make the stuff around a college football game any better. I have a, speaking of sports, I have another news story here from Xbox Wire regarding MLB The Show 21, which is very odd to say here on, like, yeah, okay. So, Sony San Diego has announced, we already knew this, but now we have a release date. MLB The Show 21 is releasing on Xbox Series X and S. Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5 on April 20th, 2021. I was going to say 2001. But yeah, MLB The Show. We we heard that this year's game would be the first one to go cross-play, and here it is. Game will be out on April 20th. Uh, if you want to get the digital deluxe version or the collector's edition, uh, the, this one's got Jackie Robinson on the cover, while the standard has Fernando El Nino Tatis Jr., but, you know. Huh? Fernando Tatis. Tatis Jr. Uh, Cross-play, cross-progression, both uh, joining MLB show, MLB The Show for the first time. Uh, it looks like that this excludes your purchased stubs. What are stubs? That's the cards in the game? Is that the idea? Uh, stubs is one of the currencies you can use. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Er, so er, that er, er, sorry, currency... is, the cur- is the currency. Sorry. That does not transfer across platform, but your progression and everything else does. So, um, yeah. Uh, there one note here: the standard edition upgrade path from current gen to next gen doesn't exist. Um, so if you buy the standard, you're stuck with standard. If you want to upgrade from current to next, you have to buy the deluxe edition up front, and then you'll get a free bump from PS4 to five or Xbox One to Series SX. exciting i've been playing a lot of baseball lately like a lot of baseball lately some roger clemens mvp baseball for the sega genesis which is to date the best baseball video game i've ever played um yeah if games still played like that i might still play baseball games matt how are you gonna are you gonna jump ship are you gonna buy both versions are what's I don't know. So I, I've, I've thought about this for a while. 
leading into this announcement before whatever, I always thought probably in my head that I would have bought two versions if one was on Switch and the other was on PlayStation. Um, I, stay, I think I'm sticking with PlayStation and call me crazy, but I think the main reason, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're going to be close to mirror images of one another, but call me crazy. I think the main reason I'm going to stick with PS5 because I want to see what the haptic trigger, triggers do in a baseball game. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, um, here's a yeah, fun I don't question. Know why this, there's no Switch version, which is weird. Well, I can see why because they're going to have to bring down yeah. the fidelity, and maybe they had plans for a Switch, but moved them a year because of COVID. Because I, you know, that that yeah, or maybe it releases later in the year. Although I don't know why you would put it out. I, I mean, you oh, can wait. you could probably put it out. Uh, it depends if you want to discount it, but like you could put it out like right as the playoff run starts happening in like August, September. I think there's still momentum in the baseball season there. Yeah. Um, is there crossplay? Yeah, n- crossplay. Yep. It is crossplay. Okay. I did yep. not. I did not read that. Yeah. Looks like you will need a PlayStation Plus subscription in order to participate in crossplay. But yeah. What from the Xbox side? From the PlayStation side. Huh. I, that, yeah. They just always make that asterisk. It's just mm. silly to me. Yeah, I get they have to say it, but yeah. No, um, but uh, they didn't really give much else as far as like gameplay details. I mean, they they had the bullet points, but I rather they say overhaul these things, but I'd like to see it in in actual like footage. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. How how long do you uh, think this before this goes on Game Pass? Does PlayStation Studios have the balls to put a game on Game Pass? I Look, man. <laughs> if the money's there, I don't know why they wouldn't, right? I'd say six to eight months. I would say, do oh, they... Wow. You're thinking within this year. See, I was thinking, like, right before... Like, January. Yeah, this right before 22. Year, or after the season, then you drop it on there and you get everybody ready well, so they buy. Six to eight months after its release, whatever. Yeah. It's, I was oh, saying, like, re- re- reveal 22 and then next week put out 21 on Game Pass. Yeah, for those who can't wait, yeah. here's last year's game. For those waiting for a new video game with the Nemesis system, uh, notably found in Warner Brothers' Shadow of Mordor and its sequel, Shadow of War, you may have to wait longer or not, not at all or... Uh, um, Warner Brothers has filed a patent for the Nemesis system, which they did, uh, according to Mark Brown's latest Game Maker's Toolkit video, Warner Brothers filed the patent back in 2015. Uh, however, it's not the first time that a video game uh, manufacturer, publisher, has filed a patent for, uh, or even been awarded a patent for some, a system in a video game. And it's not the first time that other companies have been able to use those patents, even without fault uh bandai namco has a patent on this is coming from pc gamer just pointing out some of these other examples but uh bandai namco has a patent on arranging a a plurality of objects uh notably in the katamari damacy fashion however donut county exists uh ea has a patent on the bioware dialogue wheel uh, which was granted in late 2011 but Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, and Fallout 4 both have something similar. Uh, we've also seen Nintendo has had a patent on sanity systems since they published Dark Eternal Darkness, but Don't Starve, Amnesia, Tokyo Dark, Knock Knock, World of Horror, all of these games all have some sort of, uh, you know, sanity system. Reportedly, Ken Levine's Ghost Story Games is working on a game uh, that supposedly has a Nemesis-inspired system, which I, one, forgot about Ken Levine, and two, didn't know that that was happening, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, where does this... Uh, I'm surprised, like, ever since Matt first mentioned the Nemesis system way back when, I was surprised that no one had picked it up and done anything like it. I thought that this would have been a cool thing to filter back into the Batman games, the way that... Um, the the these games borrowed the Batman combat. I thought it would be neat to see a Batman game pull this back in, and, and it never happened. But 
yeah, that kind of like dynamic storytelling that can happen would have been interesting. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a great mechanic. I just wish it was used more besides the Shadow of Mordor game. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't How? really have an affinity for Lord of the Rings. So I, don't... I really don't either, but I play those games because of that system. I mean, that, the games are fun just without the system, but like that helps. I was gonna say, like, how would Batman even use that? Because, like, everyone's his, ne- like, everyone, like, everyone is his nemesis. Like, everyone's gonna come after him. It's, he has That's the idea, gallery. right? <laughs> yeah. That's the idea. You beat up yeah. one of Joker's thugs. Like, I think it'd be neat in a Batman game. So here we go. Let's let's design a Batman game with a nemesis system. I think the idea, like, you beat up one of I don't know Penguin's thugs or something. And then you're taking down a Two Face thing, and like a guy runs up to you who happened to have left Penguin's gang and joined Two Face now, and he remembers you, and you, he he's got a jacked up arm because you twisted his arm in a certain way or something. You know what I mean? Like those kind of things that can start to uh, yeah. I, I was give thinking a little bit like of character. The, the higher ups. Oh yeah, that like, when you start, it's, it's already established. <laughs> it's a, but yeah, actually, I would like to see a thug just constantly follow and always failing. But then always upgrading until he actually becomes like a mainstay villain. That would be cool. Yeah, and then like one of the like <laughs> mid bosses or, or like you know, it's a very adventure boss, brothers whatever thing. that semi boss. That's not a thing. But like yeah, uh, a medium sized boss you have to take on. Mini be... boss. There you go. I think yeah, there's a story be... beat. I, I want to. I can't remember if it's a Mordor or War, but like there's sunlight orc that is like the scrawniest orc has no fighting capability, but you take him up the ranks. And I think he ends up trying to betray you. You just fucking put him back in his place. It's kind of hysterical. <laughs> but as he went up the ranks, he started to gain abilities because every time you kind of move up or defeat someone or whatever, like that orc gain an ability. Um, and that's where, like, I think you're just in combat, right? Like, all right, you've, you use, like, the you use, like, smoke to get away. Or, like, they're, like, he knows a thing you commonly use and he uses that against you or he prevents right. you from using it. So like a cru- like that was one of the things I liked about shadow of Mordor is like, if you ran into the wrong Lieutenant at the wrong time, like something you were so dependent upon. And if he could cancel that out, it, it like the fight becomes this entirely different thing of you just trying to scrap, scrap by instead of you just kind of doing what you're used to doing. Um, yeah, so I like I, it's like it's like that stuff. I don't necessarily need like the story stuff fun. Like when you see the same orc over and over and over again, and you see all the scars you've inflicted on them. Like that stuff is fun, but also like the um, the the like the actual gameplay side of it too, where they adapt it to you almost. Yeah, yeah. Because in Batman, I found that like I would kind of fall into my same mm-hmm. handful of things, so that to force you to you know change Pivot. your ways, it's a it's a good system for that. Speaking of gameplay and speaking of adapting, Mark, you've climbed into the mech of mechs with Metal Gunner available now for virtual reality. Tell us about Metal Gunner and it's Yeah, this this looks cool, but I obviously can't do anything without VR. But tell me about it. <laughs> uh well, it first started because uh, there was an alpha demo of another mech game I was trying to play, and that one just didn't work for some reason. Um, but I really liked that the way th- uh, your arms looked in that game because there was like you could see yourself g- gripping the the controls as your pilot, and that played a co- cool part. But um, so I tried to find something else because a lot of the mech games for VR are like. They're usually like arena based multiplayer shoot each other games or if you're not in VR then it's like some sort of strategy game and I just wanted a single player experience being in the mech and there isn't really many to choose from. And um so I saw this one. And it was on sales. I was like, whatever, let's do it. I did the tutorial first and I'm glad I did because that took some get well for- before that I had to reset up my play area because i wasn't going to play this standing i wanted to actually feel like i'm sitting in a mech so i had to change it from like a big play area to like the stand area version yeah. or whatever so i have my base stations now like behind my monitor and like off to the side and i'm just sitting here 
And so, you know, that felt right. And the tutorial was a little tough because learning how to, uh, cause you could jump, but if you, you know, if you tap the trigger again, you go into like a hover mode. Hover, yeah. But there's like a timing with, with that, where it gives you like an extra boost. So you're kind of like double jumping in a way, except you can just hold it in once you reach that height. But timing that was so weird because that determines obviously how high you go, but it it's all about like, it's just like the, the, the like you can't leave like no space in between when you're when you're double tapping. I thought I could just like you know get the full extent of the jump and then tap it again to give me a boost, but no, you have to like tap it really quick to get the full boost of going higher. So I could like jump on platforms, and that was my way out of the tutorial area. Um, oh, that's, a know, like, uh, that's how you like end the tutorial is you have to like prove that that's cool. Yeah, I, I had to climb like four stories just to get out (laughs) that's cool and then um it's very it's very arcadey overall like like your main screen is like you're not in the mech you're you can see your mech because depending on the difficulty um there's like different types of mechs you can pilot i think and i don't know if they really do anything i just did the easiest just to see how everything was and then like you know you can choose what stage i think it's like six or seven stages and i I, I don't know how, how short they are because with most VR games, they try to, you know, keep it to a minimum time. That way you can, like, take your breaks in between and whatever. It's, but I don't think this one was going to have that. I, I I got, I'm pretty sure I got to, like, yeah, I got to the final boss of the first level and I died. And I didn't feel like starting over because that was a pretty long level. That was, like, uh, shoot like 40 minutes worth it felt like and all it was it was just the same old like all right you land you go through a couple uh you know like serpentine obstacles here's a little area you you fight other mechs you fight turrets um and it just just keeps doing that till you get to like the final boss which is like this weird rotating machine with like a bunch of like uh like pylons hanging off of it or whatever and you just have to like shoot everything on it like Star Fox style and whatever um but throughout this you get uh you're you get equipped with i think like six types of guns and you can switch between them at any point Mm -hmm. and it's like you have your your typical like you know machine guns you have your rail gun you have your rocket launcher you have like some high-end like laser rifles and then your grenade launchers and each have their own ammunitions and whatever and i was finding myself switching between them for the most part um yeah, it looks like the Obviously. trailer for it like shows someone like kind of jumping between bazooka and plasma and things like that, like depending on the enemy type and, and where you're at. Was it easy yeah, I mean, to switch? It, Is it like a You have to like you have to hit a face button for it to pop up and then you like you have to look at whatever. Like everything is based on where you're looking. How you where you how you aim, it's you know, it's all based on where you're looking at and you're tilting your head to select things. Um, you can use the sticks to, to pick them, but I was just so used to, oh no, no, looking around was still for when I'm in the field, but I had to use the sticks to select the weapon and then hit a trigger to confirm it. And then you, you watch it switch and everything. Um, yeah, that like, it's, it is pretty simple. I don't know if it was because I picked the easiest difficulty. I don't know how the enemy variety would have been had I picked a harder one, if they would have added different types or whatnot, there were like a couple different types of mechs to go through and there were some situations where it had me moving around almost like quake or doom style but not to that extent like i would i would panic and just go into like a hover mode and then i would just be zipping around that way and like you could hover for a long time like you have a meter on the side that that shows you um how high up you are and how much fuel you have in that hover mode before it goes down and you can you could stay hovering for like a good uh, i want to say like one to two minutes probably it felt like and uh depending on how high you are it also lets you know how fast you're falling and you can take fall damage so you have to like know to like add some thrust to soften your lands and it's all kind of intuitive yeah that's cool it's a neat touch to make it a little more realistic do you feel like it's you know like the one you said that wasn't performing super well still had that like Hey, I'm in a mech feel to it. Does this have that? Like it, it looks like it would, but like y- you don't really like see your your hands or anything. 
Um, I mean, you kind of see yourself when you look down that you're in the pilot seat, or whatever. But uh, I, I I felt very, I felt more floaty in this mech, which is fine, I guess. But uh, I wasn't feeling the exact like weight of like, like I feel like a mech wouldn't be this maneuverable, wouldn't be this quick to like jump sure. and fly around. At least not my idea of one it's more like just like heavy walking and you know punching everything um but i I still like it you know it's i I do want to i do want to go back to it and redeem myself for that boss fight because that was just bullshit like i he had like one thing left to destroy and i was just wailing with with grenades and i had like two percent like health left because i didn't catch certain enemies from a far away that were still there and you get locked into like a dome barrier and if you touch that dome it hurts you and i was not realizing that because i thought i could just back up and so i just it was just a, too a little too late hey it's not bad fun little game um have they added mechs to apex legends yet sadly i think it's a no mm. well I mean, technically, there's Titanfall. Yeah, I think that's why he asked. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Well, they have apparently added Apex Legends to Switch, and it will release for those who've been patiently waiting. Uh, on March 9th, I guess Season 8 will kick off at the same time? I don't know if it kicks off then or not, but... um. I don't know, where are we at Apex Legends? I feel like we recently, I don't know if we talked about it on air or just at some point, but I think the name came up and one or both of you kind of grunted is kind of where I feel like we're at with Apex. I'll play it on Switch. I'll try it. I'll jump back in. I mean, hell, that's where I play Fortnite at, so why not? <laughs> I mean, I, I have friends that still play it. Uh, constantly, weekly, whatever. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. Like, it's fine, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll reinstall it. Give it a shot. It's I haven't. I. What happened is I was playing one morning. Um. Gosh, it's been a. When did that game come out? Two years ago. Uh, like two years ago. Yeah. 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 I was playing on like a Tuesday morning or a Wednesday morning for some reason, like just middle of the week. I don't know if I was sick or off or I I don't know why I was home, but playing. And then I got a, uh, win and like getting that win (laughs) was like the last time I played it. I was like, cool. I did it. I'm good. And like, I, they've added so many characters since then. I think I may have jumped in at one point when they added their first big character and update and everything. And then just nothing since, but, um, I don't know. I've I've installed Titanfall because of uh, EA Play being on Xbox Game Pass, and I never played the First original one? Titanfall, so I'm curious to maybe try that out if the servers are still active. Um, and that second one is obviously super good, but yeah, I don't know. Speaking of battle royale games, uh, Call of Duty Warzone has reportedly banned over sixty thousand players. Uh, as it continues with its third wave of major ban, third major wave of bans. Um, lots of cheaters. This uh, ran through the PUBG uh, space as well for a while. I'm sure and most of these games are not without uh, cheaters. But yeah, since the game launched last year, 50,000 players were banned in the first wave last April, an additional 20,000 in September. Um, and yeah, hackers, cheaters, etc., all taking over. Have you noticed any of this playing Warzone? Actually, is Warzone up and running? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? That, yeah. I I think that was just a server side or PC thing, but we're good. After 250 gigabytes later, we're we're back we're back in action. There you go. Eat up that bandwidth. Uh, yeah. Have you noticed a lot of cheaters or hackers or whomever? It's tough to say. It's tough to say sometimes because some people are just like really good. Uh, yeah. But then sometimes you're like, are they too good? But that's the pr- I think that's part of the problem. So because hacking is 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 an issue, and I've seen like I have been killed by one, and I'm like, man, that is that is a thing. And then you try to 
you know, you try to go back and report them or whatever. But, like, that's the thing. It, the hacker thing has taken over the kind of like the, the zeitgeist of Warzone here a bit in the last couple of weeks um, as, like, streamers talk about it and, and, and stuff like that. So, like, because that is kind of, like, on everyone's mind, every kill, not that it, you know, probably... I would hope four fifths of them are legit. You 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 think about that one fifth and like, well, was that just really good or was that bad or you know was that a hack? And then yeah. you start you know some of them are really obvious, but some of them, um, you know, you, you're kind of in, the th- in 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 that thinking of like, well, was that a hack or was he just did he just like, outplay me that that well? Um, and I think that's more of the problem. Um, so hopefully they. They get their stuff together. They uh, have said they're going to be more kind of vocal about what they're doing uh, recently um, about just being like an ongoing communication with the community because they they don't say anything about it. these bans just kind of happened and then they say they happen or it gets reported and that's kind of it. They have said now they're going to start um, be communicating more with the community. Uh, they said that they are adding like another level or two to their anti-hack system that's going to trace something specific i forgot all the details of it but like they're adding more to it uh and they're kind of their first line of communication uh since this ban so hopefully it gets resolved hopefully it gets better and warzone can not have hacking as like the main thing uh to come out of it but uh yeah we'll see but I think that's the bigger issue. It's like, did, is it a good player or is it a hacker? And then it kind of just ruins. It kind of just ruins it. You also threatened to try out not. Call of Duty I, Mobile. Well, I did threaten. I did not play it. Ah, all right. It's still installed on my Look, phone, though. It's still right there. I I can't speak for my other fifty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine accounts, but my one account is legit. <laughs> that's what we won't ask about the other ones. Okay. Uh, last week, I kind of mentioned that I've been looking for more skateboarding stuff to do since I can't go outside and skateboard, and I really want to. And then that long-awaited session patch dropped. Uh, and in fact, since last week, three session patches have dropped. We got the long-awaited point zero 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 triple oh six, but when six dropped, they were... They actually upgraded it to 7 because they had changed so much between the planned 6 and the launch of 7. Um, so the the long wait was kind of like we just skipped a patch. We got everything that was meant to be in 6 plus everything that was meant to be in 7. And then they kind of did a hotfix patch midweek uh, to bring us to point eight because there were some texture issues on Xbox. There were some progression issues on PC. Um, so they've done a lot to the game. The physics system is completely changed. So tricks feel different landing tricks feel different they've added the ability to do dark slides which is as you know the coolest looking thing in the world um you can do caspers now as well so they're tricky to pull off but they're they're cool i did one successful dark slide this week and it was the raddest feeling i had playing a game uh in a long time they also updated the uh kind of like character reaction to anything so before if you're skating along and you hit anything that you did not grind on, you just ate it. Like, immediately, like, faceplant, whatever, like, hard physics, crash, boom. Now, you can bump into a curb and just scoot your way away. Uh, you're not going to just, like, completely wreck. Unless, of course, you're going at a specific speed and you hit, like, they they made it more realistic. So that's, it's weird because I got so used to the other physics, so I'm relearning the physics engine here, but... It does feel a lot better. And I think like pulling off grinds and things like that, going into and out of a grind, feels much more natural than how it did before. Um, you actually kind of like feel the connection from your board to the the rail or the curb or, or whatever. Um, that's cool. They, they updated progression now. So they... One thing that's cool that... Um, I think some people were kind of bummed about is they removed all of your customization options that you have up front. You have to buy them all back now. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. I think a long time criticism of the game is that it did not have a, like sort of anything to do other than skate, which I was fine with. Cause I'm just hanging out, listening to music and skating, 
But for people who are coming from the skate series side of things from EA, you know, there was systems in that game where you would go and you talk to other skaters and they would give you a challenge to try, or they'd tell you like, do six grinds here and I'll give you whatever. So they brought that in here now and you start off by meeting outside of the skate shop and a skater's like, Hey, I forget the the skater now. I'm sorry. I forget the name. Um, they're like, I want to see you do a, uh, like five flat ground tricks to show me that you're legit. You do that. And he's like, all right, sick. If you can do six flat ground tricks into a grind, I'll give you 50 bucks. And he slowly does that, like tutorializing you, um, doing different tricks and, and showing off whatever, but then also giving you money to spend at the shop. So you end up with some shop money and like free t-shirt or something like that. And it feels kind of like you're getting started skating and meeting, you know, getting a sponsor in a way. Um, I think some of the menu stuff, like the UI definitely is still early and I'd like to see that improved, uh, but before we hit a 1.0 release. Um, but I think that like the, what, what they've added here is cool. Um, they added two new, well, they added three new skater options. So they added, uh, generic black female, black male, where previously they just had generic white female, white male. And then they had like a couple random characters. Um, and they've added day one song as a playable character. That's pretty cool. Um, and then as far as customization, you can now, uh, customize your, I think maybe you could always customize your grip tape, but now they actually do uh wear and tear on your board. So that's built in. And as your board wears down, you need to go home to the apartment or to the skate shop and buy a new deck. So that's kind of rad. Like I know, like maybe that is a bummer for some people, but I think it's a really cool feature. Like, cause that is part of skating that Sounds sucks. Cool. Like, I got that cool Nosferatu board last year and I dig it, but like I did one board slide the wrong way and the heckin' thing cracked. So it's, and now it's on the wall, which, hey, it's on the wall, but like it sucked because I, I love skating that board. But um, yeah, so th- I think that's kind of neat that they added that in there. There's a lot more. I'm, I'm kind of like uh, skipping over. The patch notes are out there if you want to read them. But one big thing they added was uh, Philadelphia. So you can now go to Philly. It's a whole brand new map. They actually like opened up the existing maps in new ways they added all new textures to all these places so everything looks a lot better it, it i mean it feels like a brand new game in so many ways uh, but philly they actually added love park which i think in this they call it nar park um because you know the the philly love thing is all trademarked or whatever so it just says nar um they've got uh, a coffee shop in there they've added like little little things like that to like flesh out the world so the coffee shop is looks very much like the Starbucks logo, but it is a bull and it's bulls hit coffee. There you go. I approve. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's, uh, it is session still, but it's, it's really fun. Um, and they, now they're at a pace where it's day and date. They're not releasing updates to PC and Xbox exclusive. It's, it's hitting both at the same time and they're just rolling it, rolling it, rolling it. Um, so I'm super stoked. Um, and there's an official Discord, so that's been neat seeing because people are sharing their footage from the game. They've made it easier to capture footage in the game because that was always something that, like, I thought was cool, but I sucked at, like, the actual editing tools in the game. But they've done that. It's it's come a long way since that initial, uh, heck, since that initial prison demo, it's come a long way just to show off yeah. the control scheme. But, yeah, it's it's really good. They should have, like, a second player be, like, your personal squid. Dude. I would need that. For, yeah, for those I who think... might not get that reference, Rocket Power, they had the yeah. kid who just would just film everybody. But he would also, like, be on a board or something. What I think, <laughs> like, they do they do a really good job of letting you, like, they're always kind of, it's kind of like the um, uh playstation or xbox how they have that kind of like always recording feature they kind of have that running in session where there's always something being filmed so you can always kind of grab the last 15 to 30 minutes i forget the exact timer of your session and you can rotate camera freely and move it around but yeah i would love like a multiplayer thing where it's like you're that guy you hop one and follow me around and, and whatever um bake some achievements into that or whatnot would you want this game to be like the microsoft flight simulator of skateboard games where you can just skate anywhere yeah kind of like as i was playing through philly i was like dude like 
because I, I thought about like what it what it probably took for them to like make Philly real in this game, and I was like, I don't know, man. Like I'd love to see that what they could do with Baltimore. Like you know what I mean? Like to see spots that you know or recognize is really cool. Um, yeah, I, don't, so, I think that'd be rad. Just a eight, crappy. Wait. You just skate Google Earth. just straight through the ocean to Japan. Why not? <laughs> Fuck flying, just skate on water or, or, or I'm, underwater. Uh, yeah. It's called surfing. See? This guy gets it. <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, the the thing with um with the existing New York map. Like, there's the parking garage area. There's the underground park. There's different things like that. And when you're skating through New York, you just approach those doors or those sections, and then it gives you a little button prompt like hold a to enter with philly you actually have to like menu into it um because it's a different city so whatever but they could totally they probably can't get to the point where you're just like freely skating from city to city although i would be more than happy with that uh just hop on 95 cruise from brooklyn to philly uh in the fast lane but yeah no i mean even if you could just jump like i i would I did not think they were going to leave New York in this game. And the fact they added Philly, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, now you've set a precedent. Now I want to see what you do with Tokyo. Now I want to see what you do with DC. I want to see all these things. I know how you do it. You get on 95. You don't do the actual commute, though. You skitch onto a car, and then it just fast travels you to the next city. There it is. (laughs) And then you skitch onto a plane, and then boom, you're in Japan. Yep. (laughs) That was my next thing. Yeah, you skitch a plane. You need to call Creature up. Get them on the horn right now. God. Um, yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's it's still like you can see, you know, it's from Humble Beginnings. And I am curious to see what Skate 4 ends up. You know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. Like, Skate 3 was big. Like, really big. Like, the game started off big. It had a high production value in terms of, like, bringing in professional skaters and, like, what they did with the story and stuff there. Um, I don't know, you know, yeah, this one's not necessarily there, but they're taking some steps, getting professional skateboarders in. They're getting more brands in now, so, oh gosh, I forget the brand now. There's a couple of skate brands I I was like, oh, cool, you know what I mean? Like, they they added that in, so it's the same way that, the same thing we talked about when they announced the publisher the other week, uh, that having a publisher means they'll be able to do a bit more, and it's already showing a little bit, so it's cool. Nice. Uh, speaking of games that are in early access, uh, demo form, Mark, you sent me a video of this game and I could not stop watching video of this game and it kind of coalesced all at the perfect time in terms of, uh, where my brain was going with, uh, spooky imagery and whatnot. Uh, Loop Hero is out March 4th, and there's a demo available now that I had every intention of playing and didn't, but you have played a chunk of it, or a good bit of it. How is Loop Hero? What is Loop Hero? If you could describe it for people. Uh, I would say it is... Um, hmm, I always get confused with the with, with the Rogue games, because there's Rogue Like, and then there's, there's Rogue Light. Right? Yeah. Are they two different things? Uh, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. They're, yeah, I guess games that are like Rogue have very specific rules, and Rogue Light are games that are also like Rogue, but not as strict. Okay. Uh, Does this have permadeath? Not to my knowledge, no. Does this allow you to carry progression between runs? Yes. Okay, well, so this is more roguelite, I think. Y- y- yes and no. So, okay. <laughs> um, I did have the website up just to kind of go off of that. Like, yeah. It's just bullet points and I'll add details to it. Um, the, like, if, if, the, if, if the visual style doesn't strike you first, then... Well, it, it just should immediately, but if it doesn't for some reason, which it, it has like a, like dark fantasy, um, you know, like whole vibe to it, which, you know, we all love that. And, and so much more than that though. Like, I'm not saying that you're not doing it justice, but like it, no, yeah. So many games do that. This one like taps into like classic computer game look and feel to it that like, 
I don't this this to me felt like Shovel Knight felt to NES. Like it just feels like something unearthed that we hadn't seen in 30 years or something. Like this, something about this is just exceptionally cool looking. It just it has that thing to it. Like you know, when you first yeah. said you sent it to me, you were like, it's like a cool DOS game. Like it it's got that thing to it. And I think they they nail the eighties horror vibe to me. Like that Elvira Tales from the Crypt, like that kind of like horror. Like there's something about that horror that's just like cool. <laughs> like yeah. I don't know what other word uh, yeah. I don't have like it's just something about that. There's something yeah, I, I, that's it was it was also giving me kind of um Darkest Dungeon vibes. Hmm. Because um this has so like the elevator pitch of this game is your character goes through a loop. And as you fight enemies, um, you get cards and equipment, and you upgrade your character, and you, quote, upgrade the loop that you're in by adding enemies, which drop better things. And um, it gets to a point where, you know, like, they get, the enemies will get stronger as you progress, and there is a stopping point where um, there is, like, a boss, which is known as the lich which is the main thing behind this whole game um but as a as as the website as um as four quarters team the developers of this has uh well written the lich has thrown the world into a timeless loop and plunged its inhabitants into never-ending chaos wield an expanding deck of mystical cards to place enemies buildings and terrain along each unique expedition loop for the brave hero so that's a cool thing about this about this lich because it sets up the whole story and the game itself and the mechanics are all part of the story in a way like it's not self-aware that it knows it's a video game but there are contextual reasons why the game plays the way it does so yeah like so like all of the world is pretty much went in went into darkness and and you don't remember anything before this because you're able to place the cards down, which makes land, like, actual rocks and grass add to your health and, like, in your, re your, um, there's, like, a day cycle. There's, like, a bar that, that goes across. And every time it's a new day, you regain some health. And so adding more rocks and grass around the loop will actually benefit that. And might even spawn more enemies because of it, depending on formations. Like, if I made a 3x3 three three grid of rocks, it makes a big mountain. And this mountain spawns harpies that will eventually come down into your loop. And sometimes meeting new enemies will also, um... They give, like, a little bit of, like, a backstory. Like, you have, like, a little bit of dialogue with them as your first encounter. And it gives you your reasons for why, like, everyone is the way they are. So, outside of this loop, um... Because... You have, like, you start at, at, like, a little bonfire in this loop. That's kind of like your, you know, that's how you know you're going through, like, a lap. Um, you can kind of pick when to leave with all your resources you've gathered from, you know, putting down land and killing enemies. If you, if you decide to leave when you're at that bonfire, you take everything with you. But if you decide to leave anywhere else in the loop, you only get to keep, like, 30%, I think, of what you've acquired. And this all goes towards a little town that you're building. And this is the part that's permanent. So you get to add, eventually, like, you're expanding this, like, you, you meet some people, everyone's trying to figure out what's going on, but you realize you all need each other because you miss a world where you could talk to people and everyone's lonely and whatever. So you decide to build, like, you can use your resources to, like, build a farm, and building the farm will unlock more cards that you can place down in the loop. But in order to do that, you have to customize your deck. So you, have, you can choose what cards you want to be in this loop. And as you upgrade the town, you unlock more things, which unlocks more things. That's just, it's just this whole chain of that. Um, let's see, like, yeah, and then there's, there's also unlockable character classes, but because of the demo, I don't think they let you go that far. Sure. Um, cause I can, I can only get a certain amount or certain types of resources and I can't get like the ones that are required to unlock these further things. So you, they just give you the warrior class, 
you know, it's pretty straightforward. But I saw that the rogue class would would have been like the next one to unlock, but it wouldn't let me do it. So I don't know how the other ones will play. I don't know if there's a mage class at all or what have you. I don't know how many classes there will be, but uh, it, it it's cool how it's weird how you like how you get to choose how you want to challenge yourself. So like, uh, I might I. I might have, uh, there's this one card, which I, I believe it's just called a vampire house. You place that anywhere adjacent to the loop and whatever enemies spawn, a vampire will spawn with in, in that fight. And, um, I guess I should back up a bit. The fights are automatic. Uh, you don't get to choose like when to strike. You don't, you don't do a final fantasy, like turn based thing. It doesn't, there's a little meter that will, you know, like, that will fill up beneath the health bar, and once that goes up, then he will auto-attack. I guess it's like an ATB kind of thing for both sides. And depending on your equipment, that will determine um, how they fight with, with, like, the weapon. Like, you get, like, a weapon to equip, a ring, um, a shield, and chest armor, which I assume is just, like, a whole suit. Excuse me. Um. And all that can have different effects on depending on what you're uh, equipping. All your extra stuff will be in this little inventory slot on the side. And as you gain this stuff, this loot from killing enemies, uh, you can only hold so many, right? So when it gets filled up all the way and you're adding more stuff to it, um, it pushes out the older stuff at the bottom. From like, It goes from like top to bottom filling up. And it will push out the bottom stuff, and it will recycle that into resources for you to collect. And the same goes for your cards that pop up at the bottom. Um, whenever you kill an enemy, you have more cards pop up. If you don't, if you keep letting that go, that will push into a different kind of resource material as well. And, uh, where was I going with that? Right, so choosing how you want to challenge yourself is pretty interesting. Because as the days go by, like, uh, if you place down, like, a, a graveyard card, for example, a skeleton will appear, but it'll only appear every three days. And so, in in game time, and with with that with that meter, so and yeah, you can you have that kind of have like that kind of like growing challenge, right? Like, you're not always going to see a skeleton on every loop. You're you might run into other stuff. Is that the idea? It, I mean. W- like like what like usually the terrain will dictate what enemies spawn, and it'll only be within that square of the loop. So the skeletons will only come out of a graveyard. Um, you can connect the graveyard for as many tiles as you want. That's up to you. Um, there's also I think, I think it's just called the the woods, and that that spawns a a rat wolf. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just self explanatory right there. Um. And then you can choose to connect that too, and then you might be able to add another card that only affects those types of enemy terrains, which is called I th- oh, what's the name of it? Ooh, it it it, it it's a type of root. It it's like a it, it, it it's it, it's like spiky vines, and if you place that next to the enemy terrain, it will latch onto them and kill them once their HP is below fifteen percent. So it will just kind of assist you, and you can just keep spreading that as you find those cards. Um, You can get cards that can get rid of um, enemies or spots, because, like, if you place, you know, you're placing so many rocks down to increase your HP, that might spawn a goblin camp. And maybe you don't want that goblin camp, because there's, like, five or six spawning for some reason, and you're not reaching that side of the loop yet. So you can use this one, like, lich card and get rid of that camp, Um, you know, until another one pops up or something. The, there's items that can make you go faster throughout the thing. There's also a timer that can also make you run a little faster too. It's like the you can watch it at one speed or up to like two speed or something. Uh, you can pause it at any point too, so which I was really glad for. If you just like right click or hit the space bar, it pauses everything and that gives you time to think and strategize how you want to place your cards down or to, to land and everything and and whatnot. Um, and then every time you reach your little bonfire, 
it fully restores your health. And then you can try to keep going again. And, like, it's it, it's a gamble because as you're going defeating enemies, the enemy level is rising. Everything is getting tougher. You are getting better loot. But there's a trade-off. We know it's, like, when do you stop? When do you do you want to go all the way? Do you want to try to fight the boss? Uh, how good are your stats? Because every run has been different for me. And I've played, I played this for about five hours. And I didn't realize I was going to play this long for <laughs> for a demo like this. No, like, I think that's rad that you can get that much time out of it with, you know what I mean, with just a demo. I, yeah, like, it, it doesn't it doesn't stop you necessarily with, with time. You can play as long as you want, but yeah. you can only get a certain amount of resources. Right, which right, right. That stops you from, from progressing. But I, I think, like, playing this over the next month or so, priming you for the final release could definitely, like, then you're, you were kind of already know it generally speaking, and you can jump in uh, with more and more. You know what I mean? I think that'll just add to it. This is... I, I did not realize the demo was on Mac, which makes it even easier for me to jump into, so I'm like... And your save carries over. Dude, I'm in. I mean, I was already in anyway, but it was just going to be like a little bit of a, you know, I got to jump to Windows, I got to make sure I'm good there, blah, blah, blah. Nope. I'm just yeah. do it. As soon as we're done recording, I can download that demo. And like... Also, like the music does a good job of setting the atmosphere too. Like everything, yeah, everything, everything just feels so in place and cohesive. And like, if you did, if you did let the enemy bar go fill it all the way up, and you know the lich appears, yeah, the music changes again to where it's more energetic, but you feel so anxious because it's I'm, like, because like you can't stop yourself from you can't go backwards, you can't go reverse in the loop. You you just have to watch them go. And it's like eventually you can choose to leave if you want, yeah. But part of you kind of also like. It kind of you kind of want to fight them to see what's up, see what happens, and dialogue changes with that. Um, kind of like Hades, yeah. It does remember when you fought before or oh, any characters cool. you interacted with before. It doesn't do it often, but like there's one character in your camp that you talk to, and that's constantly ever growing, which is expected because you're growing your camp. But the Lich remembers you, and it's like. How are you able to like be here and not be punished in forever darkness? And your douche just like, shut up and let's fight. Like, yeah. it's just like a line like that. It's like I'm not here for your bullshit. It's 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 really cool, really well done. I'm just surprised that I got addicted to something like this because it's kind of like a strategy game in a way too. Yeah, and that's not typically in my wheelhouse. No, but, but... something about this just yeah, I'm I'm super stoked for this one. Matt, yeah, any. It's... Intrigue with Loop Hero. So I've been watching gameplay this entire time because as soon as you started describing it, I was like, I need a visual. <laughs> yeah. No, this looks really cool. This yeah. looks like something that would be right up my alley too. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I might just wait for the full release though. Yeah, it's, I know you said uh, the demo progress bucks. carries over, but like, I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's a cool That's looking, <laughs> a cool looking little guy. Um, Reminds me I think of um, for... the the gameplay part of it with the cards. Um, what's that card battler? That's on Game Pass right now. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of that, but instead of it affecting the actual combat, it just affects your loop. Yeah, yeah, like the cards in this game aren't like any typical like trading card game, or like it's not it's not like Magic: The Gathering or any yeah. or Hearthstone. It's it it. There's nothing like you're not doing. Yeah, it, it, it's it's just another way to. Edit yeah, there's another game like this that I can't quite. The world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, but it's for, really neat looking. Like from screenshots, to me, it looks a little overwhelming. Just staring at, like, what am I looking at? And like that's a feeling I've always got from afar. But even though it looked cool, just the art style alone and whatever. But once you get actually like into it, and you start to kind of just figure it out for yourself because it's weird how it's like it lets you be your like you're the teacher and student simultaneously that's cool because you're like oh what does this do okay now i know what this does and what it oh, affects yeah. but, but you're doing it to yourself like it's weird like you're the you're the test and the subject it's yeah. it's so weird but like it, it does a good job with pacing and it lets you it lets you figure everything out kind of at your own pace so if anyone looks overwhelmed by it don't if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Our final segment here, uh, the crossover of a lifetime. Not really, but sort of, kind of. Uh, a lot of coalescing here with uh, 
two brands, so I felt it appropriate to combine the two as one. Sonic's going first person, y'all. Or wait, hold on. What's the story? No, no. But Sonic Prime is coming to a Netflix near you. A new 24-episode animated series uh, developed in the third dimension, which I think we knew this was coming, but now it's got a date. I think previously, wasn't it like... uh, It was one of those things where like Netflix did a whoops and uploaded like a list of upcoming shows or something. Is that what the idea was? Uh, I don't know. There was some piece think. of this that we already knew about, but now we have confirmation. Official press release. 24 episode animated adventure for kids, families, and longtime fans. Uh, it's going to be animated at wild brain in Vancouver. Uh, it looks like folks from that have worked on Ben 10 uh, and Big Hero 6 are being brought on as showrunners and executive producers. So we'll see. I don't know. I um, saw something. On, um, sorry. I saw something on Twitter where it was it was one of the people from that from that studio who was like one of the heads with who helped with like Ben 10 and um, Generator Rex, I believe, was another show that they did that was kind of similar to to Ben 10 in art style and story and tone. Yeah. And fans were asking if it was going to be along those lines and they were kind of reassuring them. Like it's going to be like generator Rex, but with a little more, um, wildness to it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, it seems promising. This is right on the heels of Roger Craig Smith, uh, confirming on Twitter that he's no longer the voice of Sonic, the hedgehog. Uh, this was a few weeks back or maybe last week, January 28th. Um, yeah, I think I haven't heard about Knuckles, the voice actor, but everyone is gone except for Eggman. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a shame. He's been the voice for a long time. And then, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens with this guy here. I'm tangentially, tangentially, uh, potentially is what I meant to say. <laughs> potentially excited for a new Sonic show. Uh, pick it up on a thread from last week. We talked about the future of nintendo merchandising and what we'd want and then like the day the podcast went live nintendo announced burger king toys uh which coincidentally i did not think about the, maybe i thought about this story like uh subconsciously or unconsciously as i opened the show today but i did not intend for the two to meet but if you're looking to collect some bad looking toys that don't look like toys at all but rather pieces of plastic what have nintendo characters uh Run, don't walk to your nearest Burger King. Skate to your nearest Burger King and, and get yourself a Happy Meal. Kids meal. Boys meal? Baby's meal? Little guy? <laughs> little... <laughs> go pick up... Go pick up one of the King's little guys and get yourself uh, a really bad Link's Awakening cardboard cutout piece of plastic trash that you won't do anything with. Look, man. Like, some of them actually look okay. Like, the Luigi and the Mario like figures look cool. Yeah, and then you have Link. Little... Link is <laughs> just a flat, a flat piece of plastic 2D, and they removed his sword. Yeah, it's violent. It's just, Mark. <laughs> it's just an open hand. <laughs> it's just an open hand. I'm like, why did you do this? It looks very <laughs> bad. It looks very bad. Oh, uh, the, it's a very um, rushed concept. Oh, the Tom Nook one, or, or the the. Animal Crossing one is like a little marble maze, which I guess you can never have too many of those to throw in the trash. Uh, the Splatoon uh, thing, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> like, do you push down on the inkling and it hides behind the stuff and shoots back up and tells you to throw it in the trash? Like, I don't know. <laughs> so, Nintendo's kind of done this before. Well, they had those Mario Kart toys from McDonald's. Mm, but... Specifically with Burger King, oh, they um, had Wii, they had Wii U toys. Hold oh, please, and like some of them seem creative. I'll give them that. They even have a, a Diddy Kong one that is literally barrel of monkeys that are Diddy Kong shaped. But I see these little two D plastic sticker characters on things too. Like there's there's the one with Donkey Kong, where like throwing like you have to like push a barrel. There's a Mario okay. and Luigi ones on clouds, but they're like little thin plastic things. But the Wii U one seems like they did better service overall. 
These Wii U ones are wild. I don't remember these at all. I don't either. But then again, that that says something about the Wii U, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> Fire uh, do you remember? Do you remember Taco Bell's Nintendo toys for the sixty four? No. The only Taco Bell toys I remember outside of those weird little dog things they had were the Goosebumps toys. No, oh, those were good too. Yeah. I remember having like uh there was a Star Fox toy that I had. I do remember these it, Taco Bell toys. It was just a handle with the trigger and had a mirror, but you were like shooting like little like silver balls, I think. Dude, and that's finally, where they came from? These ruled i had that thing yeah. i had that cool pyramid <laughs> thing i had that donkey kong boy these are super rad oh my god how do i get these back in my life again ebay yeah that's probably gonna be the one dude this is They're like sick. stupid expensive too i don't know man i was trying to find godzilla toys from the 98 movie i know yeah. but hear me out that's yeah. what got me into taco bell <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the hype of this movie when I was 10 years old. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong there. And I remember having the fighter jet toy or whatever, and we have the cup holder. And I was trying to, like, look at those again. eBay is, is selling, like, each toy for, like, 10 or 20 bucks. I'm like, no, nah, man, it ain't worth it. It's not. <laughs> I mean, that's what you think. I'm about to spend $70 on a complete set brand new in the packaging of these N64 Taco Bell toys. Oh, shit. I can get that pyramid for 30 bucks, yo. Dude, no, the, I don't know if I would actually spend this much. <laughs> I don't know what websites you were all ever using, but I found a fast food toy database website. Oh? That I did not even know existed. FFToyDatabase.com. FFToyDatabase.com. Um, the Star Fox I've... toys are on here 20 bucks for a set of five, one in the of packaging the and thing? four loose. Of all the same thing? Yeah. Oh, right. The Taco Bell had those, like, pogs, too. That, yeah, like, different 64... Like, there's a GoldenEye one. There's a Killer Instinct one. The different number values. I love this so much. I mean, he's only posted, like, four things. Never mind. This isn't a, much of a database, guys. <laughs> okay. And, at, like, way back, I remember, yeah, McDonald's had the, like, Mario 3 toys. I had some of those. I think I'm going to talk about it. I think I know we opened on Burger King and I was pretty strong <laughs> on that, but I think I'm going to go to Taco Bell. We're going to give it another shot. Have, We're going to find they, out if we they can don't have kids meals swim. anymore. Huh? So they don't have kids meals anymore. Just it's okay. FYI. I'm going to get a quesadilla mat style. <laughs> Not a Crunchwrap Supreme with bad lettuce on the inside. Um, our oh, final... wait, there's more posts on this site. It's just you, you can't really search on this sucks. <laughs> All right, we're back in with what's the give us the URL. <laughs> Send the kids home with the URL. FFToyDatabase.com. Nailed it. Dot net would have made it more legitimate, but I, I get it. SEO man. Oh, it's filled uh, with ads. Lego it's trash. <laughs> we talked about Lego Metroid. Lego Sonic is a real thing now. Not only did it reach its goal on the Lego Ideas website, but it's been approved, like done. Ready to roll. Um, the review board has given it the green light. They're going to work with Sega and uh, Viv Grenell, a.k.a. Toaster Girl, on Lego Ideas. Uh, they're working together to bring one of the most iconic game characters and brands to life via Lego Bricks on the basis of Viv's colorful and fun creation. It's pretty rad. I wonder how I many mean, of these, like have come to fruition these lego ideas things i mean it's easy for lego because they already have the sonic minifigure designed yeah so that i think that's half the work right there yeah <laughs> no this looks cool i mean the, the design in the actual thing is not the final design yeah. of what they'll end up doing but they're going to work with sega to put things out and like yeah it, it looks pretty sick man like i remember Way I don't know if it was called Ideas at the time, but I remember when there was fan made Minecraft Lego sets before that was a real thing, and like those they weren't even like actual like minifigures. They were just literally two blocks with like a face as a sticker like put on or something like that. 
and I don't know if it ever ended up. I can't remember if they had like, actually had minifigures of them or they stuck as blocks, but it seems like they had this going on for a while now to submit ideas, and if it gets popular enough, I guess they decided to just really run with it. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think it gives people the ability to kind of stretch their creativity and uh, it gives Lego an easy, you know, talking piece to approach a company about its property and say, I'm going to look, I'm going to repitch them Bionicles so they can re-release it. (laughs) I bet. Hold on. Let me just type the word Bionicle (laughs) into this Lego Ideas website. Uh, at aug underscore mental bring back bionicle you're already doing it why are you saying you're gonna when you've already got a whole page <laughs> listed on here dude no there's you gotta keep a, it going there are 21 results of a lot of it is people that sucks people are like maybe we can do it i didn't mean it sucks i mean it sucks for them because they're like holding on to hope yeah. and i i know that feeling because i still think there's gonna maybe be a castlevania game eventually but yeah it's like Oh, that's so sad. There's people who have pitched things for the 20th anniversary of Bionicle, and now they're like, okay, well, I guess it didn't happen. So how about the 25th? Like, there's stuff now for the 25th anniversary. Come on. I'll hug them all. I know. I am going to go hug a Taco Bell (laughs) drive-thru, among other things. I don't know what else I'm going to – who knows? Um until then, you can find this podcast and all of our other stuff at thefreecheese.com. You can email us, podcast at thefreecheese.com. You can follow everyone on Twitter. The Free Cheese is at some free cheese. Mark is at aug underscore mental, both on Twitter and on Lego Ideas. And Matt is at mattyice131. Who do you want to see come to life in the form of Lego? Which Burger King menu items do you always start out with? What Hi. anniversary of Bionicle will they... <laughs> yeah. Which anniversary of Bionicle are you celebrating this year? Uh, email us, podcast at thefreecheese.com. Let us know. Uh, that is it. Uh, we'll be back next week with another episode with three of us with more video games. That's it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, listener, for listening. See you next time.